You know how there are movies that come along that are about historical events or people and get the facts wrong, almost defiantly so. (laughs) Well, the cure for that is here, in the form of The Taking of Power by Louis XIV, a film completely immersed in historical accuracy. Because of this, we get one of the most impressive recreations of any period of time on film and one of the most boring movies ever made. The film is about Louis XIV, France's son king. And that, right there, is the crux of the problem. For history nuts like myself, Louis XIV is a fascinating point in history. He is a rare example of a leader taking complete control of a country. Every single aspect of the economy, politics, and everyday life had to go through him. Every single decision was solely his. There's a lot more to it than that. It's much more complicated, but that's the basic gist of his reign. The Taking of Power by Louis XIV shows how he took complete control and what he did with it in great detail, including the building of the Palace of Versailles. In terms of the sets, it's magnificent. But that doesn't stop the movie from being a bore. The Taking of Power by Louis XIV was directed by Roberto Rossellini, the neo-realist director who is most well known for his war trilogy, which includes Rome Open City, Paisan, and Germany Year Zero. Here he acts more like a tour guide than a director. There is no style in this film or attitude towards Louis XIV and his reign. He shows us these events with such an impartiality that it's almost defiantly historically accurate. Now, as I said, the reason for the boredom is Louis XIV himself. And that mainly has to do with how he has been romanticized throughout time, most notably through the books of Alexander Dumas, such as The Man in the Iron Mask. It's hard for me to look at the historical Louis XIV without my imagination being swept away in the tales of Dumas and the idea we all have about Louis XIV. Time did more to make Louis XIV interesting than he did himself. The film starts with the death of Cardinal Mazarin, the advisor to the king. From there, we follow Louis XIV as he tries to obtain autonomy and take the power away from the nobles and his own mother. That's part of the problem, too. How Louis XIV took power isn't as interesting as what he did with it. Him taking power consists mostly of a bunch of people talking and him trying to trick them out of power. That description, though, does this movie too much justice and makes it sound much more exciting than it really is. That kind of regal yet underhanded takeover would be fascinating if Louis XIV or any of the people he dealt with had any charisma at all. The acting in the film is incredibly lifeless. The characters are played by the costumes and not the actors. Best scenes in this movie are when we see Louis XIV really exercising his power and the links he'll go to obtain it. Just how far he'll go to protect himself and his power are almost frightening in how much he just does not care about others. There is an amazing scene where we see, from Louis XIV's perspective, the arrest of a noble whom he has framed. We see it simply through the window of one of his rooms. We see the arrest by his royal guard, but we don't hear it. It's a masterful scene in the way it removes the human elements of the arrest and showing how far Louis XIV will go to take complete power. There is another great scene where we see an extravagant dinner after he has taken power, where the invited parties come only to watch him as he eats an extravagant meal. Because of the acting, though, we don't care about the arrested noble, and both of these scenes just become curious fascinations rather than emotionally evocative. With a better script and players, these two scenes could have and would have been great. I guess The Taking of Power by Louis XIV ranks highly among 1966 made-for-TV French historical films, but that's not very good justification to see it. As I said, there is something I like. 
I've touched on it lightly, but I'll talk about it here. The sets and costume design are so accurate and grand that it makes the movie great to look at. To see it is as if someone went back in time with a camera and shot these events as they happened. It was just unfortunate that Louis XIV and his pals happened to be very nervous on camera and got all stilted and emotionless. Some of the sets, such as the construction of the Palace of Versailles, were so grand and spectacular and amazing that they really struck me a lot visually. But none of this really makes up for how much of a bore most of this film is.